The connection between zeros and ones is considered common knowledge. Generally, people associate this connection with the concept of binary code and then just start talking about computers. I, however, would like to avoid going there. So I'll ask this question. What occult or metaphysical significance do both zero and one possess? Let's start at the beginning. Zero, infinite unexpressed potential. Also referred to as the triple blackness of space. My plan right now isn't to get into the triune nature just yet. I have other segments for that topic. What I will do, however, is speak about one aspect of that nature, and that is the infinite side of it. Zero and one are equally infinite, but in differing manners. Said differently, the quality or density of the infinity is different. Similar to how an ocean can be all water, yet at various depths, the quality of the water is different. You can say that one is the densest aspect of zero, or even that zero is the most refined aspect of one. Zero is the aspect of that one, which is unexpressed. The simple quality of being unexpressed invokes the possibility of being expressed. The simple quality of potential invokes the process of unfolding itself. For zero, as infinite as that infinite unexpressed potential is, it is still one thing. The natures of zero and one are deeply rooted within each other. They define one another in a certain respect. Just like I said, as infinite as that infinite unexpressed potential of zero is, it still remains one thing which invokes the qualities of one simultaneously. Either way, regardless of how intertwined the two of them may be, their qualities and nature exist in somewhat of a contradictory form, paradoxical even if you will, which I would say now warrants us doing a bit more of a deep dive into the qualities and nature of one also known as the one thing that is all things. The one thing that is all things is simply that. One is the expression of unity, of wholeness, one thing. Representing that geometrically is a point. One is the quantity that expresses the quality of unity. A unity is a whole composed of units. Therefore, while zero is a unity composed of no units, one is a unity that contains only one unit. This is the one thing that is all things, as opposed to all things as one thing, which is not, but that's a discussion for another segment. The point here is that that one thing that is all things, one, is simply that, only one thing. Thing. There is no place in which you will find the one thing, because that place would be something other than the one thing. There are no thoughts that the one thing thinks, because those thoughts and even thinking itself would be something other than the one thing. When it comes to the one thing, there is simply that one thing. Zero is the no thing. The thing that possesses no thingness of its own. The unity that possesses no units of its own. And the one begins it all. But one is only that one thing and that alone. The question that somebody might ask next is how can that one thing ever be anything else if it is only one thing and nothing else? How can anything ever be created at all? The answer to that question is illusion but I will cover illusion, however, in a different segment. As far as the left-hand path is concerned, and really, occultism in general, zero and one does not mean that everything is a computer. That's short-sighted and a terrible relationship with reasoning. Binary code is an application of those underlying principles and not an explanation. What I have been speaking about in this segment here are the qualities of these two quantities. The number, as we generally know it, 
is a symbol for a quantity. And these quantities possess or express their own qualities. Know these qualities of each of these quantities and the keys of ontological metaphysics are most certainly yours. The alternative is super spooky human computer. It's up to you.